We have before us the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Model and the Asus Zephyrus G15. Now, both laptops have RTX 3080 GPUs. In this laptop, we have the i7-11800H, and over here we have the Ryzen 9 5900HS. 32 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. I'm sorry to not have them configured exactly the same. The issue with this one is you upgrade it. It only has one upgradable RAM configuration, so it would be, still only be 24 gigs of RAM or 40 gigs of RAM. So right off the bat, the expansibility, expansiveness of this laptop uh, is going to be better because you're gonna be able to get it up to 64 gigs of RAM if you decide to do so. This one will max out at 40 gigs of RAM. So if you're considering upgrade path as a pretty high priority, then the Razer Blade 15 is gonna be your go-to. Um, now right off the bat though, let's talk about build quality. We have an all aluminum laptop in the Razer Blade Advanced model. Uh, and then over here we have a magnesium alloy laptop. Now the screen bezels are both uh, a plastic material. Um, this one, it feels a little bit nicer. It's a little more of a glossy finish where this is a little more of a, just a simple matte plastic material. Um, so overall build quality is gonna be different. Uh, the magnesium alloy is gonna be lighter. Um, so the thin and lightness of this laptop, thinness is gonna be over here, lightness is gonna be over here. It's slightly thinner. The Razer Blade 15 is slightly thinner than the Zephyrus G15. Uh, but then again, the G15 is slightly lighter than the Advanced 15, only by a little bit. Um, fingerprints, I'm pretty prone to fingerprints. I've got pretty oily fingers, uh, whereas the Zephyrus G14 with the white top cover is not gonna be so fingerprintable. Uh, now, now, regards to speakers, both have good audio experiences. However, the Razer Blade Advanced is gonna have a slightly better audio experience with upward facing speakers. We do have upward facing uh, kind of bass up here, uh, but the actual speakers are below here under the laptop. Um, so here's a quick audio sample of both uh, using the speakers. Now, while we have the laptops open, as you can see, both screens are exactly the same height. There's just a thicker bottom bezel on the Zephyrus G15. Now, regarding the trackpad, both have great trackpads. Let's see if the size difference is. Um, I think they're almost identical in size. Yeah, they look extremely close in size. Regarding the feel of each of the trackpads, the Razer Blade 15 is a little softer, uh, feels a little more secured to the chassis. The G15 is fantastic, so I'm really splitting hairs here between these two, but if I had to pick one, I'd pick the Razer Blade 15. Um, but overall, this is still a wonderful trackpad, especially compared to the G14. If you're thinking between the G14 and the G15, um, I would go with the G15 for the trackpad alone. It's a great trackpad. Here's a quick audio sample of me using both of the keyboards and trackpads so you can hear how that sounds. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability between these two models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, in regards to the keyboard, both keyboards are great. There's a little bit of a longer key travel on the G15 uh, compared to the Razer Blade 15. I like a lot of the function keys, however, on the G15. It allows me to access like the Armory Crate Center quickly. It allows me to control the fan mode and there's just more access from the keyboard compared to the Razer Blade 15. However, both are great keyboards. Um, I prefer the longer shift key uh, on the Razer Blade. However, you do have a full shift key over here. It's just a lot longer on the Razer Blade over here on this one. Now let's talk about ports real quick. The port selection is slightly different on each model. On the Zephyrus G15, you're gonna have two USB type C's, USB type A, network port, HDMI, and your power port, as well as a headphone jack. On the other side, we're gonna have a mini SD card slot and a USB type A. On the Razer Blade 15 advanced model, we're going to have a SD card slot, full size USB type C, USB type A, and HDMI. And then on the other side, we're gonna have two USB type A's, a USB type C, and a headphone jack. So very close in port selection. However, this is gonna be have Thunderbolt capabilities, or because this is Ryzen, this is not Thunderbolt. Now, there's two benefits to an SD card versus 
versus a mini SD card. The SD card is great for the on-the-go photographer. However, your card's always gonna be hanging out of the chassis. Whereas the cool thing about a mini SD card slot is it slides in and stays in. So what would be cool for that is you could actually create somewhat of expandable storage for your laptop if you find yourself on the go and you wanna bring a couple extra SD card slots, maybe like a 512 or a one terabyte, slide those in and then you have expanded storage. Um, so it's a good way to not have to open up your laptop to expand your storage and like add new drives. You can just go ahead and slide a mini SD card in and then you kind of have that expanded storage, which is a really cool feature. Um, it's something I didn't really think of at first and then I actually watched uh, another video and they mentioned that. I was like, yeah, why not? That's a, that's a great idea. For color gamut range, you're gonna have better color gamut range on the Razer Blade Advanced model than you will for color gamut range, they're pretty neck and neck, and you can see the results coming up on the screen right now for brightness, color gamut range, and color accuracy. Let's go ahead and take a look at opening and closing each of these lids. I'm gonna grab it with one hand and open them. Close them, they both open and close very smoothly. It's a little tighter of a magnet on the razor blade, so if you want a little bit more of security, they both magnet shut, as you can see here. Um, but this one's just a little tougher to kind of get off of that magnet. Let's go ahead and check screen flex. So screen flex, good bit of screen flex on the uh, G15, uh, much less on the razor blade 15. And then there's gonna be really no screen flex at the bottom because of the three hinge configuration, where on the G15, you're gonna have some screen flex on the bottom. Uh, and then of course, pushing here in the middle, uh, they're about even with how much push is at the center there. And then closing the top covers, they're about even there as well. There's some push on the on the top covers as well. Now regarding webcams, the Razer Blade Advanced comes with the webcam where the Zephyrus G15 does not. And here's a sample of the Razer Blades webcam. Here is the camera for the Razer Blade 15 Advanced model. You can hear the audio, kind of see the lighting. Like most webcams, it's pretty grainy, but it will do the trick for your meetings as necessary. Regarding build quality and assembly, that's where I lean towards the Razer Blade 15. The bottom cover is just assembled into the side panel so smoothly. It's just a very nice minimalist build. Where on the Zephyrus G15, you've got a lot of edges and design elements and you know, you end up with some catchy edges because of these things. You know, you have a catchy edge here, right here on the bottom cover of the chassis where the hinge sits in. Uh, you have a little catchy edge here where the network port sits. Where it's just, there's more catch points on the G15, where on the razor blade, it's just very smooth, very minimalist. And so as far as build quality and assembly, this is gonna feel like a more professional designed piece of machinery. This is of course gonna feel more like a gamer laptop, but still, I love this thing. It's a great laptop, man. Uh, I recently did a full dedicated review and I, you know, I kind of opened up like why this is my favorite laptop uh, for 2021. Regarding battery life, those results are coming up on the screen right now. Because of the ability to switch into iGPU mode and have heavy control in the Armory Crate Center, you're gonna have better battery life out of the Asus Zephyrus G15 than you will the Razer Blade 15. It says an 80 watt hour battery, this is a 90 watt hour battery, um, but even though the wattage is so close, because of iGPU mode being able to shut off the dedicated GPU, it's gonna give you better control over the battery. Now there are some settings within the Razer Blade Synapse Center, um, but they don't give you as much customizable control as the Armory Crate Center. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the head-to-head -head battle with the benchmarks. First and foremost, we're gonna start out in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core. In the simulated benchmarks, the Ryzen 9 5900HS wins out on most of them, but life and work does not take place in simulated benchmarks. So let's get into the real world 3D modeling tests. And as you can see, the Razer Blade 15 slightly edges out the G15 in Autodesk 3DS Max, but in Autodesk Maya, the G15 takes over and in PTC Creo, but then back into SolidWorks, the Razer Blade steps back up by about, uh, 
one point. So they're pretty neck and neck. However, the G15 does kind of take over in Maya and Creo compared to 3DS Max and SolidWorks. Because of your amazing feedback, I now am featuring gaming benchmarks on my channel. I'm really excited to be releasing these now and on future laptops. So just keep an eye out for those. They might not be on every single video, but they're gonna be as much as possible from here on out. For the After Effects benchmark, both laptops are neck and neck with these RTX 3080s, and they both have powerful CPUs, and so After Effects is running very well on each of them. If considering this laptop for Premiere Pro, my vote is gonna lean towards the i7-11800H. Intel QuickSync helps out a lot with smooth playback and export times. The Ryzen processor does great, it's just slightly behind, but if you want the most optimization possible, then Intel's still gonna be the way to go for Premiere Pro. Now moving towards the playback, both in 4K and 6K B-RAW, both laptops did very well with those RTX 3080s, so there's gonna be no concerns there. As you move into red footage, you start to get a lot more drop frames, but overall, um, I'm living in B-RAW with my Blackmagic Pocket Cam 6K, uh, so that's really happy for me with both of these laptops doing well. Now moving into DaVinci Resolve, we can see the export times coming up on the screen between the two models. Playback was great in DaVinci Resolve. The studio version really optimizes GPUs. It really loves GPU performance. So they're gonna perform well in studio. I actually run the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so you're seeing results for the free version in regards to the export times. Now, one of my favorite tests is to run the laptops at different fan modes to check the thermals, fan noise, and export times. And here are the results of each laptop coming up on the screen now. As you can see, overall, the Razer Blade 15 is a cooler laptop, no matter the fan mode. Whereas with the G15, if you go on turbo mode, you're gonna get really high thermals. But as you move down to silent mode, you're gonna get better thermals, but still a great export time. So really it's up to you how you wanna run the laptop. I personally would run it on silent mode. Both laptops laugh in the face of Photoshop and really any design tool, these things are gonna absolutely slay those design tools. So whether you're an illustrator, artist, designer, or photographer, you'll have no problems with either of these laptops. Punch for punch, it's a difficult decision. They both have upward facing speakers. They both have good keyboard decks. They both have good color gamut range. They have the RTX 3080 and great performance in all of the apps. If I had to make a choice, I would lean towards the Zephyrus G15. It's gonna be a little more budget friendly, a little bit lighter, and I just really like the keyboard trackpad and configurations of the laptop. The advanced model is great. It's just a more expensive model. It's more of a premium, top tier laptop. This is still great build quality, but this one just stands out for its assembly and premium design aesthetic. And so that's where really that one leans in. So if you wanna have a good design aesthetic, really enjoy your laptop for more than just the performance, then you might lean towards the Razer Blade Advanced model. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.